Jameson. Thank you for joining our program today. Do you find the financial crisis has led to more demand on corporate fraud investigation? I think it was uh, Warren Buffett who said, uh, when the tide goes out, you see who's not wearing their swimsuit. And I think he said that in reflection of financial distress, but I think it also applies to financial fraud. So um, how do you think that the uh, company should do to prevent fraud? I think it uh, really comes down to tone at the top, um, prevention, detection and having the appropriate response. Uh, prevention can include things like making sure your employees know the code of conduct and the ethics that are expected of them. Um, uh, detection could be things like uh, forensic tools, like continuously monitoring, continuous auditing type tools. A whistleblower hotline, for example, can also be used. And response means understanding what you do once an issue is identified, whether it's taken to the board level, whether you approach external counsel, whether you use forensic accountants or leave it with the internal audit team. Mm -hmm. What method are you using in your investigation? Do you need to send in any undercover in the company? Um, normally we use forensic technology as much as we can, especially as a lot of the information is in electronic form. Uh, so when people think they're deleting an email or a file on their computer, they're probably not deleting it in most cases. Um, but we also tend to use general investigation skills and, and corporate background checks or individual background checks. Uh, we don't normally send undercover agents into a company to spy. We leave that to the TV programs. Have you ever come across any interesting case? Uh, we've had a lot of interesting cases. Um, it's difficult to name names, obviously. Uh, but one of the cases uh, I'm thinking of uh, involved a gentleman who'd been or reached a senior management level of a brokerage company. He'd been there 20 plus years. Uh, he had uh, established a, a fraud which occurred over about five to ten year period. Um, what had happened was that one of his clients have, uh, notified the company saying they thought they had more shares in their account than what they actually did. Um, over that period of time, what he'd been doing is when the statements were going out um, for the clients, he was intercepting the statements and swapping the company's statements with ones that he'd produced. So he had covered, if you like, the front office where he was dealing with the clients, selling them investment products, taking care of their shares. But he also covered the back office where they were sending out the statements. So he was able, he had the motivation because he was a gambler um, who had debt problems. He had the opportunity because he had the front office and the back office access. And he rationalised it by saying he would have won in Macau at some stage and been able to pay everyone back. Mm -hmm. That's a very interesting case. And thank you very much for joining our programme okay. today. Thank you.